Listen, so it's wonderful to be a Christian. Christian. Oh, it's wonderful to be a Christian. Oh, it's wonderful to be God's child. Oh, it's wonderful to have your sins forgiven. Oh, it's wonderful to be redeemed, justified, forever reconciled. That was good, but I honestly think I was listening to us sing for a little bit, and I think we actually sounded like this. Oh, it's wonderful to be a Christian. I think we sounded like that. Yeah. So let's be a broken record. Okay. Ah, no. The men is singing. I'm it's just going to enjoy watching. <laughs> the men are singing today. The men are going to get preached at today. Yeah, let's, let's do it again. Oh, it's wonderful to be a Christian. Oh, it's wonderful to be God's child. Oh, it's wonderful to have your sins forgiven. Oh, it's wonderful to be redeemed, justified, forever reconciled. Hey, wow. That was good. Amen. <laughs> Let's go to pray and we'll be seated. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for uh, all the moms, Lord. Thank you for my mom. Thank you for Faith, Lord, being uh, the mom, Lord, that she is, Lord, to, to our four kids, Lord. Thank you for all the moms. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Yeah. You can go ahead and be seated. There's a... Uh... Sorry, I have to use coffee ready. It's hey, hey, Felicity. Can you come over here real quick? I need Felicity's help with something real quick. She's going to help. Felicity, you know the song when I, uh, about like when, when do you have Jesus on your mind? Do you remember that song? How, how does it start again? Oh yeah, Jesus, 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 I got him on my mind. Jesus, 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 I got him on my mind. Jesus, 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 I got him on my mind. Oh, I got Jesus on my mind. I like that song. Felicity, can you help us again? Do you want to do it one more time? Okay, so we're going to sing it one more time. Um, but when we get to, you know, instead of, oh, I've got juice on my mind, I'm going to ask someone in here, when do you have juice on your mind? So you better be prepared to answer, okay? Mm -hmm. All right? Yeah. You got it? Huh? Okay. Jesus, 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 I've got them on my mind. Jesus, 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 I've got them on my mind. Jesus, 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 I got him on my mind. Oh, I got Jesus on my mind. Here we go. You ready, bro? Mike, when do you have Jesus on your mind? When I read my Bible. Oh, okay. When I read my Bible, I got him on my mind. When I read my Bible, I got him on my mind. When I read my Bible, I got him on my mind. Oh, I got Jesus on my mind. Brother Andrew, when do you have Jesus on your mind? When I walk outside. Amen. All right. When I walk outside, I got them on my mind. When I walk outside, I got them on my mind. When I walk outside, I got them on my mind. Oh, I got Jesus on my mind. Brother Brandon, when do you have Jesus on your mind? When I'm driving. When I'm driving, I got them on my mind. Faith, when 
I'm thinking. When I sprained my ankle, I got my mind. There we go. When I sprained my ankle, I got my mind. When I sprained my ankle, I got my mind. When I sprained my ankle, I got my mind. When you're singing, here we go. When I'm singing, I got them on my mind. When I'm singing, I got them on my mind. When I'm singing, I got them on my mind. Oh, I got Jesus on my mind. Brother Thomas, when do you have Jesus on your mind? When you're bleeding. Oh, his nose bleeds. Okay, here we go. When you're bleeding. Chantel, she's out uh, doing, she's either under the water or above the water. Underway. Either that's way. Phrase, underway? I think so. I think that's the phrase, right? That's the word. That they're underway, they're, they're out wherever. Yeah. Okay. In the water. Under the water, yeah. above they're, the water. They're out uh, playing in a river the river below the ocean. Okay. They're, they're, they're having fun. So pray. <laughs> so pray, 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 river, pray for Chantel. <laughs> And then uh, I think that may be Miss Miss Jerry Bell. She's she's out as well. And then Brother Cameron. Yes, sir. Uh, glad you back here, everybody. Amen. Uh, right. I didn't know uh, we have a couple weeks off the point, so I'm sorry we have to see everybody. But uh, it's good to be able to share. Uh, I'm glad you get back. So I'm um, going to write back to you tonight. You know, been busy with the for the last couple of weeks. Uh, get it clear with Jesus. Get it right. Well, very thankful you're 
your back of the camera that you're feeling well. Good to have you do this. Amen. And what else? What's your job? For all the moms. All the moms, and yes. Hopefully, my first surgery. Yes. Yeah, yeah definitely. And so, uh, praying for all the moms. And you said something about bap baptism. What did you say? Baptism. Yeah. More pray baptism. Pray for baptism. More baptism. Yes. Pray for more baptism. Brother Brandon. Uh, I didn't catch this lady's name. I'm sure I will again. But uh, the last lady, Justin, and I talked to, mm -hmm. you know, she didn't say the prayer or anything. She wanted to go on her own. I know, but it sounds like she believed, you know, the gospel. She mm -hmm. took it in. She was getting a little emotional towards the end. But she was very receptive, and it was the prayer that uh, they took, and yeah. she got saved. Definitely. Amen. Thank you for that. Uh, there is salvation yesterday, sir. Thank yeah. You. I was going to say, pray for Daniel. For Daniel. He was a young man in the Navy. He enhanced the door with like newborn baby, like this thing was just born. Wow. Yeah, three weeks ago he said. And then we gave him the gospel, and then that I was too cool. loud, so I had to whisper because it was like disturbing the baby. Yeah. And then Andrew, he had to kind of calm down too. Uh, <laughs> and then, it was funny because she was like, "Hey, you heard the baby's here." I was like, "Oh, the baby knows." And after he quiet, like the baby quit squirming, gave him the whole gospel, got saved, and said, "Hey, come to church tomorrow. I'll be your first Mother's Day." With Amen. Dwight, yeah. And yeah. so, yeah, he was Catholic. Probably not a hardcore Catholic. Was. Yeah, was. Was Catholic. Miss Mary, do you have another prayer request? Um, that he had the forecast of our son. Yeah. He won, but she was so dis disappointed. Um, anyway, it is what it is. And um, I talked to two men. Praying for that, praying for uh, Becky and her son, and so, uh, amen. And then, really, Cameron, do you, do you have one more? Also, pray for um, <coughs> my niece's grandma and grandma to put his ear on something so they can make it to be free. One, to get her national air, or two, a very, very sick and loved ones have not gone. Yeah. That's, that's something real big you have to pray for. You know, my mother, she got put on the table for me. And that's something I also pray for. Yeah, sure. Because it's so right. crucial that somebody can die and come back anytime. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Those are praying for that. Pray for, please pray for faith. Pray for an ankle that feels better. And then also tomorrow is one year since her dad passed away. And so you can keep in mind her. And then her mom as well. But amen. Let's go ahead and pray. And then I got about 15 minutes to do this lesson. So uh, let's let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for loving us, Lord. And thank you for everything you've done for us. Thank you for everyone who's here today. Thank you for all the moms, Lord. And Lord, I, I think of my mom. Uh, and thank you for, for her, Lord. And just uh, raising me up, Lord. And uh, Lord, uh, to love you. And thank you for that, Lord. Thank you for my wife, Lord. The, the great mom that she is, Lord. And um Lord, just getting to have a, a front row seat, Lord, watching her uh, deal with the kids, Lord, she does a great job, and thank you for, for moms, Lord, and just everything they do, and uh, uh, Lord, uh, uh, please meet the prayer requests that were mentioned, Lord, and uh, it's not a prayer request, Lord, people sick, Lord, people uh, who uh, are out of town traveling, Lord, just please be with them, Lord, and uh, Lord, thank you for the salvation <coughs> yesterday, Lord. Daniel, Lord, help him be able to come to church today, and uh, Lord, thank you for his two-week-old baby. Lord, thank you for that as well, and the first Mother's Day right there. And uh, Lord, I uh, know uh, Miss Becky, she was mentioned, Lord, please be with uh, her and her son, Lord, and Miss Sherry also meeting two, two young men, Lord, and uh, Lord, just work, work in their hearts, Lord, help them to uh, understand, Lord, that, uh, that it is by putting their faith alone in you. Lord, that we can have everlasting life, Lord. And so uh, help them to, to understand that, Lord. Uh, Lord, please be with uh, uh, Brother Brandon as he met uh, a young lady yesterday, Lord. And, and uh, Lord, she said she would pray by herself, Lord. And I, Lord, I, I pray that happen. And so please be with that, Lord. Lord, please be with all the other prayer requests that were mentioned. We love you in Jesus. Amen. 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 Let's go ahead and go to the book of First Corinthians. I'm going to try to teach this in, in about 
15 minutes here. I think I'll be able to. Uh, next week will be 2nd Corinthians. But today, 1st Corinthians. What would you guys say is the most popular chapter in the book of 1st Corinthians? 15? Well, that's the one I use. Did you say 13? 9. I said 13. Okay. You, you say 9? Yeah. What, what's in 1st Corinthians 9? I think it's 9 12 or 9 6. It's one of those. Well, the I was is sufficient for me. Okay, yeah, that's, that's a good one. Yeah, I would. I think I agree with Brother Mike. First Corinthians thirteen. Does anyone know what First Corinthians thirteen is? Oh, the chapter, yeah. right? Yeah. That's uh, that, that's probably what I would say off the top of my head would be like the most popular chapter in First Corinthians. A lot, a lot of people know that one, and uh, and so that that's that's a good chapter right there. Um, but does anyone know who wrote the book of First Corinthians? Paul. Paul. Good job. Anyone know who wrote Second Corinthians? Paul. Paul. All right. There you go. <laughs> uh, amen. Uh, the book begins in First Corinthians, verse one. It says, "Paul, Paul, to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God and Sosthenes, 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 our brother." Uh, but him, but we see that. But Paul, Paul, he's the author of 1 Corinthians. Uh, we see that this is mentioned as well. Paul refers to himself writing 1 Corinthians uh, uh, many times throughout the book of 1 First, First Corinthians as well. Uh, we see Paul mentions many of doctrines in this book, uh, but also we see his pastor, pastoral care for the church in this book. Um, I, I won't really have time to do it this morning. I may actually go into, into it deeper next week on some of the doctrines that we see here. Uh, so I may not even go into 2 Corinthians next week. But, uh, but uh, you see many doctrines that are mentioned in, the, in this book. And you see also uh, there's doctrines in this book that Paul makes sure that we understand. That, that maybe we could have taken wrong from maybe the book of Acts. And right here, Paul... He gets it, all right, this is, this is how it's supposed to be done. <laughs> and uh, you see Paul gets some stuff settled here. And we'll, we'll dig deeper into that next week. Yeah, we're going to do it next week. We'll dig deeper. I don't have much time today, so we'll do it next week. But, um, uh, but when was 1 Corinthians written? Uh, between A.D. 55 and 56, while Paul was at Ephesus. Does anyone remember, I, I said this last <laughs> It was either last Sunday night or two Sunday nights ago, but does anyone remember how long Paul stayed in Ephesus? Two years. Yeah, about two years. Because uh, if you remember, Paul, uh, he was about to leave, or he was thinking of leaving or something like that, And but at night, uh, a vision came to him. I think, I think it was last, no, it was two weeks ago. Uh, God came to him in a vision and told him to stay, right? And so he stayed for another... Uh, I think the Bible said 100, and it was like 180 months or something like that, or 100, not 180 Whoa. months. What? It's like 18 months, 18 months. Sorry, not 180. That's, that's a lot longer than two years. Uh, but, uh, but he stays uh, for, for about two years. Now, who was 1 Corinthians written to? Uh, written to pagan converts of Corinth, the people who are saved. They become brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, we see in verse 2 of chapter 1, it says, Unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, to them that are what? Sanctified. Sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints with all that in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours. We see it's written to the people in Corinth. They were once pagan, but not anymore. They are now saints, right? They are brothers and sisters in Christ. There are over a half a million people in Corinth at this time. That's a lot of people. Does anyone know how many people live in Hampton? Hundred K. There's about a <laughs> thousand, tens of tens of thousands. There's a hundred thirty-six thousand people who live in Hampton. Uh, Newport News is about one fifty, and then if you throw Williamsburg in there and all the other, there's uh, there it's it's almost like four hundred thousand people that live right here on this side of the, the water, this peninsula area right here. A lot of people that live right here. 
Uh, and so if you look on, you know, Wikipedia or whatever it is, you know, population, uh, it'll give that number about 400,000. So Corinth was bigger population-wise than right here where, we're, where we live. That's big. Uh, that, that's, that's pretty big. And so uh, uh, Corinth, and I've never read Pilgrim's Progress before. Okay, if you if you if you haven't, that's okay. If you have, that's okay as well. <laughs> uh, but uh, Vanity Fair. Any, anyone heard of Vanity Fair? It's in Pilgrim's Progress. And Christian, he runs into Vanity Fair on his journey. Uh, but uh, 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 Corinth was like the Vanity Fair of the Roman Empire. It, it's considered a a city of vulgar materialism. Uh, and and um, uh, immorality. It's a, a place of idolatry. Uh, the goddess Aphrodite, uh, she was worshipped there. Uh, she was one of like the favorite goddesses there. Uh, Corinth was also a place of, of pleasure and sensuality. And so it was just whatever you feel like doing, do it, right? Whatever, whatever feels good, go for it and do it. That's Corinth. And that culture had definitely crept into that church in Corinth. Uh, we even see that one of the members needs to be kicked out. Let's go over to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, 1 through 7. Let me read this real quick. In the New Testament. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, uh, verse 1, it says... It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication is not so much as named among the who? The Gentiles. The Gentiles. He's saying, now I think this is interesting, there's a distinction here between the Gentiles and the people who are saved in the church. Isn't that interesting? Uh, and I, I, you, you, Remember, your identity when you get saved is Christ. Amen. Your identity is not what you were. Your identity is what you are now. You are a Christian. I, I, I think Paul kind of clarifies that too right there. There's a distinction. You uh, sometimes will look at people and say, all right, raise your hand if you're not a Jew. And, and, uh, or, or raise your hand if you're a Gentile. And you know, we'll, we'll raise our hand. You know, something like, Really, that's not what you are. You are a Christian. You are saved. Your identity is Christ. You, you are not a Gentile. You are a Christian. If a, if a Jew gets saved, you know what they are? Christian. They're a Christian. Amen. Uh, and th and that's, that's what they are. And that is what their identity is. Uh, and so we even see Paul here. He, he throws that uh, distinction there. Uh, and so, and, and, and if you look though, what, what is that saying? Okay, the Gentiles then are what? They're the unsaved, right? The Gentiles are the unsaved. The Christians are the saved, okay? So what Paul is saying here, what is happening in the church not even the unsaved would do that. Whoa, that's, that's big, right? And so what does Paul say to do? It says, verse 2, And you are puffed up, and have not rather mourned, that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from among you. For I verily, as absent body, but present in spirit, have judged already as though I were present. By the way, if anyone looks at you and says, You're a Christian, you shouldn't judge. <laughs> Tell him to get out of here, yeah, right? Amen. Get him out of here. Get out of here. Paul's a Christian, right? Amen. And what did he just say? He judged. Amen. So then that makes you wonder, what does the other verse mean when it says judge not, lest you be judged, right? It should, it should make you wonder that, right? Yeah. <laughs> we should wonder, okay, well, Paul is judging here. Well, that means I can judge. I should judge if Paul is doing that. But hold up. It says over here, judge not lest you be judged. Okay, there's a Bible scripture for this. What do we do? Go to it. We study, right? Amen. Study to show yourselves, Approved. study that you might, study to show yourselves approved unto God, a workman, right? right? That means rightly dividing the word of truth. That's what you do here. You want to make sure you rightly divide it. Because if you are a Christian and you never judge anything, you're going to fall for absolutely everything. Amen. And then you're going to be whatever you didn't judge. You're just going to go after anything and everything. It's vanity fair. It's the lifestyle of Corinth. So you got to judge. You have to judge. You, you, you have to do it. Um, and so, and that, that's what we see right here. Paul, he makes a judgment. Now, now what, what was his judgment? Let, let's go to verse, let's go to verse six. Um, I'm sorry, verse five. Let's go to verse five. It says, 
to deliver such and one unto saint for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit might be may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Your glory is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? What's that next word? Purge, Purge right? Yeah. What does that mean? Kick out. Man. Kick out the doofus, out. right? Kick him out. That, that's, that's what you're supposed to do. And Man. so, um, you know, uh, the pastor is supposed to judge. The people are supposed to judge. And you know what? Sometimes we, we all got to come, come to understanding that that guy doesn't belong here because little leaven leaven is a whole lot. Amen. <laughs> and, uh, and, and that's, that's biblical. Man. That is right. We see Paul has this pastoral care right here. Uh, and it needs to be done. It has Amen. to be done. The pastor's not a bad guy when he kicks out a member of the church. Amen. Not at all. If anything, what, what is, what's happening? He's making sure that he cares for the other people in the church, right? Uh, and so that, that is what we see right here. And that culture had crept into the church. Man, we got to be careful about the culture out there creeping into the church. Because it will. If we are not careful, that culture will creep in. And the next thing you know, we're going to let some guy fornicating with his mother-in-law just do whatever he wants in the church. Mm -hmm. And no one's going to say anything about it. And it's going to take for someone who's not even physically here to look and say, hey, you need to do something about it. Yeah. You know what's so sad about that? Why did no one in the church say, hey, something needs to be done about it? Right. Someone in the church should have said it. And, and, and so it's, it, it's a horrible situation. It's so sad that Paul, the one, the, the one who's on the outside, had to say, hey, you got to get that worked out. Now, where are they located? The city of Corinth, right? Uh, Corinth, it, it's in Europe. It, it, it's, it's in Europe, and that's where it's located. Uh, Corinth was an important center of commerce. Uh, it was a place of athletic contest. Uh, second only to Olympia. Let's actually go and look in 1 Corinthians chapter 9. You kind of, uh, Paul, he understands the location of where it's at. He understands the, uh, the athletic uh, contest that would happen. So what, what does Paul do? Chapter 9, verse 24, look at this. He says, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that ye may obtain. That's a good verse, right? Amen. And uh, but also you see some competition, right? You see some competition. Uh, uh, have you ever seen people run like this before? You know, some people run like this before. People run. There, there's this one guy. I'm not making fun of anyone, okay? I'm not doing this all. You don't even know this guy. No, I don't even know this guy. But I was at the gym one time, and I saw this guy on the treadmill, and he, I don't even want to copy what he was doing. I feel so embarrassed. I'm, but he, it looked like he was falling. Like he, I'm pretty sure he was stable on the treadmill, because he was doing this for five solid minutes. But it looked for five solid minutes, he was just falling. And there's this person that was, that was next to him, and this person looked over. Like this at one time too to make sure the guy was okay. But like he was stomping while running on the treadmill, and I don't—he must have been joking. It was a couple of weeks ago at, at uh, on the base on, on the, the gym on base, and it was, it was kind of funny. But run, right? We see that running right here is kind of that athleticism going on, the competition, and so we see Paul kind of putting that flair in here as well. Uh, this was an international city. Uh, it was a mixed population, a lot of many different people from, from all over the place. Now, uh, real quick, uh, why was it written? There are many reasons for this, re uh, for this letter uh, to be written. Uh, you can actually divide it uh, in this way, kind of an outline right here, four points. Number one, you see Paul was concerned about administering the church's affairs. And so you see that in chapter 1 through chapter 6. Uh, then number two, you see he desired to answer the church's questions, and that's 7 through 14. And then we see Paul wanted to address the church's misgivings in chapter 15. And then point number four, we see he asks for the church's contribution to help the church in Jerusalem. You see that in the last chapter. Um, and then what is it about the theme? We see sanctification in Christ. Uh, and that's chapter 1, verse 2. Uh, key verse, let's go over to chapter 2. Verse 14, good verse right here. Verse 14 says, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. What's the natural man? Old man. 
the unsaved, right? That, that old unsaved man. That's what that is right there. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Interesting, right? Good verse right there. It says the key verse. Underline it. Highlight it. Memorize it. <laughs> there you go. That's pretty good. Amen. We'll end right there. Next week, we'll, we'll dig deeper into 1 Corinthians. Uh, there, there's a lot of good truth in 1 Corinthians. Uh, if you are ever confused about some stuff in Acts, Go and look. You can, you know, the rest of the Bible actually can clarify some of the stuff that goes on in Acts. Uh, and so that that's really, you know, I, I don't know if God set it up that way. I don't know. And, <laughs> but uh, Acts, you see the, the history, right? You, you see the history of that, that New Testament church, the beginning of it. But then you see 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, the, 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 those, those uh, epistles right there that, that Paul wrote. He's helping them as they started those churches. He's helping them understand, okay, this is how you run a church. This is how you operate a church. This is how it should be in a church. And those books really help us understand what was going on inside of the church work. We just, then actually, we kind of just get an overview of what happened in Ephesians, but then, in, or in Ephesus, but then in the book of Ephesians, you get to dig deep and, and see what happened in Ephesus. And, and you kind of get to read about those people a little bit who got saved, right? <laughs> Here, we get to read about the people in 1 Corinthians who got saved, you know? Man, I wonder whatever happened to that church in, in Corinth. Well, here you go. You can, read, you can read a little bit about that church in Corinth, and you can see uh, some of their faults and some stuff that they had to work on. But, amen. Uh, amen. Let's go ahead and pray, and then uh, we'll have 10 minutes, and we'll get started. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for loving us, Lord. Please be with us this morning. And a thanks for the good book of First Corinthians. We love you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen.